nice clean piece all ready to be painted as you probably guessed this was a telephone table to start with I took these off because they're kind of dated aren't they now like I don't want it to be a telephone table so by taking these off I have transformed it very easily into a bedside table haven't sanded these down as much as what I might normally do but you can see that there's some gorgeous wood on this piece it's really good quality and the reason why I've not sanded it down as much as I normally might is because I'm going to be going in there with quite a bit of texture so this is going to be a very inspired French style piece I've got a few very pretty exciting plans for it it's going to be a nice stone like faux finish so stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do that now spray tells you to use two scoops with eight ounces of paint but honestly I just like to kind of make it up as I go along I definitely feel like I'm going to need quite a bit more <laughs> but we'll just see how we go this is going to be my base layer and I have a chip brush here from Dixie Bell one of the premium chip brushes and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of my brush this is the kind of consistency that I've got so you can see it's fairly thick and I'm literally just going to dab 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 that bad boy All right, while I'm putting this first coat on, I have a sort of question for you all. Um, a bit of an opinion, a bit of an opinion poll. So as furniture restorers, artists, upcyclists, whatever you want to call yourself, do you think that we should be sort of branding it more as an upmarket, elite kind of, you know, profession to be in? Or do you think we should be marketing it as sustainable, accessible, something that we can really teach anybody to do? Um, something I've been thinking a lot about lately and I can see it from both sides so I firstly think that yes there is definitely definitely a market for high-end upcycling because there is a lot of work put into it especially when you've done it for years and you've learned the profession you've learned the art especially especially if you are fixing up massively damaged stuff and or you are painting you know art onto furniture um, then yeah you can demand higher prices for sure however <laughs> I also think um, due to like I am massively into you know saving the environment and all of that stuff as a value it's really important to me so I feel personally like we should incorporate both so if you're someone who can command higher prices and you want to brand yourself as higher end then yes definitely but I also think that we should make this world accessible so that people can do it on, the, on their own terms, on their own budget as well. Just want to know what you guys think about that. Okay, it's check-in time and this is where we're at. I've got really good coverage, but you can see there's still like a few little bits and pieces showing through. I've just realized I need to do that leg down there. <laughs> got a lot of texture going on and yeah, that's where we're at. I am scatty sometimes. I'm just gonna do that now. <laughs> you can't say that these videos aren't, you know, um, just me painting like I do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I'm now using Best Stang Wax in white and I'm putting white wax all over this before I go in with my next layer of paint. And I know some of you might think this is a bit weird because it's meant to be a sealant or a decorative finish, but what I'm hoping and what I've done in the past is when I've put on white wax like this is that it means when I put on my next coat, my next coat of paint is going to look really faded because it's going to be settling on top of the wax rather than a harder surface, which is just going to make it look softer um, and then just more faded in areas. I'm hoping I'm explaining that well, but you'll see what I mean in a second. The only place I'm going to miss is this bit and the top part because I have plans for those. It's checking time again. I just want to show you guys the progress as I go along. Hopefully you can see that it's not very even. Um, but we've got some white wax on there now. And yeah, it's better if it isn't even. So don't get too caught up on that. Okay, my next colour is Dusty Blue. So this is a colour that I don't use very often. And honestly, I think I've had this colour in my um, in my cabinet for literally years so I was like thinking it's time for you <laughs> so this is going to be my next colour and I am going to be using the Dixie Bell Bell brush to apply it with again I'm going to be applying this all around but I'm going to be skipping the top and the middle of this piece here as I apply it I'm just going to be using these kind of soft circular movements like that. I did just get a little bit there, it's fine, I can sort it out afterwards. Next up, I have some Stormy Seas and also Sea Glass and, and I also have two of the cheaper chip brushes from Dixie Belle so I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing on this now. A dry brush, you just want to take the tiniest amount and maybe just wipe any excess off onto a rag. So you can see I've barely got any on my brush at the moment and then I'm just kind of going to go in and just very lightly brush it over some areas. What I'm trying to do is create this old faded look. I also have my original brush to hand just so I can go over some of it just to sort of soften the edges out. So what I'm thinking here with the sea glass is just to create like a bit of a highlight as though the sun may have bleached some of it and you know it's just the pigments have faded over time. Then which with the stormy seas which is a bit of a darker colour I'm just going to lightly brush over those edges and that's just going to create a bit of a big net and that little bit of age you know like the corners have been fingered a lot <laughs> and they've gotten really dirty <laughs> a similar look to what you might get with um with dark wax which we will be using some of that soon as well Next, I have the new decoupage paper from Dixie Bell called Ancient Marrakesh. And I'll get this out now and show it you. I'm confused. <laughs> Found it. So it's quite big. And it has this really oldy world vibe to it. And can you guess where I'm gonna put it? I'm sure you can. I'm sure you've probably already figured it out. <laughs> 
yes, it's going in this panel here. <laughs> so I have some gator hide, which I'm going to use as my glue. And I'm gonna give it really good coverage all inside this panel. Okay, so I've got these edges and it really doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to go in there now with my gator hide and just push them down a little, just get them kind of tucked in. Um, if you want a more precise look, then obviously measure it out beforehand, use a Stanley knife or that kind of thing, but I'm happy to have it looking kind of distressed. And now I'm just going to do the exact same thing on all the other sides. I have kind of not let the paint cure properly, especially with that white wax, and I've gone in and done all of this, and I have scraped and knocked some of the paint off. So I'm gonna go in and fix that now. It's really easy, all I'm going to do is, I've got a tiny bit of the um, dusty blue on my brush again, and I'm just going to kind of stipple over it, and in these edges here as well. If I get a bit on the paper, again, it's, it's fine, because I have that distress kind of look anyway, so, yeah, you guys should know me by now. <laughs> um, and really, it's as easy as that. All that side now has kind of disappeared and you can't see that it was ever, you know, knocked or scraped. Actually, what I've decided that I quite like while the gator hide is still wet is just to go in there with some dusty blue like this and then get my fingers and then just rub it. And it kind of just adds to that age, makes it all look like it's blended into one piece. Um, get my gator hide brush again and just blend it out. See these little things, these little mistakes that happen sometimes can be turned into positives. While the gator hide's still tacky, I've just got a sanding pad and I'm just going to lightly rub over it. I want some of that texture underneath to really shine through. I'm actually distressing it again, but I think I quite like it. I might leave it actually. You don't have to, you can paint back over, but I'm gonna leave that um, that distress look that's going on here, I think. We'll see. So for the rest of this piece, I'm going to seal with more white wax and add a little bit of brown. So I'm going to put the white wax everywhere, but also I've got a little sponge on hand just to wipe some of the excess off, just to give it that kind of cloudy effect.
Lastly, I have a little bit of brown wax and I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of this to my brush and put this around the edges mainly. Again, just doing soft circular movements, not putting loads on all at once, and this is just going to age it a little bit more. I've got my brush handy just to wipe some of that excess away, just to make it look less thick and more natural. So just to finish up a few final touches, I've got a little bit of paint there. All I do is give it a bit of a sand. Sometimes it needs stronger sandpaper just to very lightly pull it off like that around the edges. I'm now using for the inside of the piece Big Mama's Butter in Orange Grove, which is not only going to make this smell gorgeous, but it will also nourish and revive the wood as well. Mm -hmm. 